Take two. Um, good evening. It's still December the 14th, 7, and we're calling uh, to order at 7.04. I'm Christy Boudreaux, Chair of the Hatfield School Committee, and this is our December business meeting. And um, we want to kick off with an option for public comment. And just to reiterate, um, public comment are our short statements. It's not something by our practice or policy that we comment on um, unless it's already on our agenda. So if I don't see anyone in person in town hall this evening, but if there's anyone online that would like to make a public comment, we would be happy to hear you. Okay, seeing no one come forward, we will move on uh, to mission moments. If anyone has a mission moment they wanna share, um, which is just one of the ways that we're seeing our district goals come to life. So some chance to have some feel good moments. I know I have a short one, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I heard that Smith Academy is planning a sock hop in which they are inviting um, residents of all ages, particularly those that might have experienced sock hops in their youth to come have like a dance at Smith Academy. And I like, just thought that was such a lovely way to get some of our older residents into the school and involved and engaged. So. I look forward to hearing about the sock hop. I think it's a little while down the road. Yeah. I have two. Ooh. One is that we successfully had our holiday concert today. So we had grades two through six performing. We hope to open that up. It took long, we, it went longer than we anticipated. <laughs> so it was probably good that we didn't have pre KK and one also perform. But um, I don't know if they've done dancing in the past, but there was a lot of dancing and then a lot of singing. So. It was great to see some community members that came up to me afterwards who didn't have students in the school but were like, thank you, this was so much fun. So people were really excited and jazzed about having that back in person. And I also have a first grader, um, one of the teachers had shared that uh, our new math I ready, he says he wants to stay in for recess to do math because math is that much fun. So my hey. two feel good moments. Yay, I ready. Any other mission moments? Uh, I'm share on a okay. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Dr. Driscoll. Yeah, I, I, thank you for letting me join from CBAM. <clears throat> um, so I've actually, uh, too, as well, the the, um, the art and music show that we had at Smith Academy was fantastic, it was well attended. The students worked so hard to make it happen. It was just, it was really nice to see. Um, and and the other one was, uh, has to do with our, uh, our snowball that we that the student has on so it was a winter dance it was it was just really nice to see it. what particularly uh stood out to me was the fact that we had students of all all ages all across the school seventh through twelfth grade um together in and in just interacting with each other that wasn't you know it was really just just nice to see that that level of togetherness it was really it was, it was wonderful uh, and, and to, to piggyback off of yours um, the, the sock hop, I think everyone's really looking forward to it. Uh, and, and just a huge thank you to, um, Ms. Slish for kind of spearheading that effort as well as, uh, to the students involved in the group that are, <coughs> that are organizing it. So thank you to them. Yeah. Awesome. Just a quick one. I just, um, having uh, my office in the high school, high school, middle school is a, is a unique experience for any administrator. Um, but one of the things I get to observe every day, especially um, around these, this time of year, is the fundraisers that go on. And I get to watch and listen to the students um, who are reaching out for yearbook or poinsettias or any numbers uh, of different things. And they come in and they sit down <coughs> and, and they're being trained how to talk to businesses and uh, uh, adults to sponsor them and so forth. And I. I, I really, I can, I've seen growth over the short time over several different fundraisers of several different students who uh, have participated. And I think it's a great experience to have um, our unique size um, of, that allows an adult to be there to, to support them. And not always the teacher, it could be the one of our administrative assistants. Um, so, so it's a great opportunity for kids to grow and have that skill because that's a really important skill to have. I just wanted uh, to piggyback about the holiday concert because I was there. Uh, you could not find parking anywhere. It was a very well attended uh, event by parents and community members. 
um, our own director Bremner at the end, who knew she can play a some type some type of French horn. A French horn, and then um, all the staff got up and did a song at the end, and the kids loved it. The parents loved it. It was fantastic. Thank you. That was like an extra sweet touch at the end. It was to it see was the nice. kids so excited to see their teachers up there was hilarious <laughs> and endearing. So that is awesome. I just have a quick one. Um, we all have teachers who have impacts on our lives throughout the years, and this year um, we lost two former teachers from the Hackley Public Schools. So I just want to take a moment to recognize um, Barbara Stengline, who was a second grade teacher at Hackley Elementary Art Breer um, for decades, and a position I guess she took over from her mom directly, which is kind of oh, neat. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, and she's someone that, you know, and Jen's in our class, we grew up just calling her auntie because there was one of her, her nephew was in our class, and um, so she was just all of our aunt. And then um, we lost Alan Willieko just a couple of weeks ago, uh, who was a high school history and sociology. sociology? Yeah, that sounds right, mm -hmm. uh, teacher. Um, and he just, he found a way to keep history entertaining and interesting for high schoolers, which is not easy to do. Um, so I just wanted to take a moment to recognize and appreciate their work. Thank you. Okay. Any other mission moments? Okay. Um, so moving on, the consent agenda. Is there anything that needs to come off the consent agenda. Um, I would like to make an edit to the minutes, to the November 16th minutes, so we can take that out. Okay. If you'd like. Um, so we will pull the minutes, but speaking to donations and um, the walking path proposal, um, all in favor of approving those? Hi. I thought we weren't. We don't necessarily have to, but okay. We, no, I, I know we waffle. <laughs> I'll get it. I was I'll confused for me. <laughs> I'll get it straight one of these times. Okay, so let's go back to the minutes. We will have a separate vote, and um, you're requesting an edit. Yep. So um, I just wanted to edit that. I'm looking at them right now. The vote for the Guatemala trip. Item six, um, the motion was made by um, Ms. Englehart. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the minutes with the edit? So moved. A second? Second. All in favor of approving the amended minutes for 1116? Aye. Aye. All in, any opposed? Okay. Awesome. Um, I think we have seen the student representative report offline, and we wish her speedy health and recovery. Who was that? I believe it was Hadley Zinal. Okay. The name wasn't, wasn't attached on. to it, yeah. and I wasn't sure who sent in the report. So, um, so Hadley, feel better? Thank you for the report. Uh, and next up, we have a quick vote on an updated calendar for the 22-23 year. Do we need to talk about this? Well, just that, um, so in an error on my part, um, the Monday, uh, January 2nd, will be the um, celebrated holiday, uh, and we will now go till June 15th. So I will get a nice birthday gift. Um, and um, th those are the changes. So there's no other changes to the calendar. Okay. Still going 180 days. Wizards. So we are having January 2nd, 2nd off, off, but the last scheduled day. Will be June 15th, and that will be an early release just as we normally practice. Provided we don't have any full snow days. Right. Correct. Okay. If we don't have any full snow days, <laughs> we'll go to the earliest. June yeah. 22nd. Right. So um, did the HTA get a heads up? Yes. They, okay. They're in favor of it. I kind of thought they might be. Um, any conversation, questions? So that moves with five snow days. Does that move us to the 23rd? No, I think it's the 22nd. Just because the 19th is it's a holiday. Also a holiday. Yeah. So you have the Friday. I mean, we'll count the snow days when they come, but right. I'm just the Friday. clarifying that June 19th it would, be, would the, be a holiday. I agree that it would be the, the 23rd. 23rd. Okay. okay. So we'll change that. 
All right, stage, we'll get it right. So 15th with, of June would be the last day if there are no snow days. The 23rd is the last possible day if there are five snow days. And we meet all the days in school that we need to meet and it keeps within our contracts. So um, I know we apologize for any confusion. There's probably a little more that goes into formulating the calendar than meets the eye. And um, thank you for your patience, community. Is there a motion to approve the updated calendar? I can make a motion to approve the updated calendar. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor of um, reflecting the 2nd of January as a day off and extending the year to June 15th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that's passed. Okay. And tonight we have um, one report by Zoom or we're gonna just- Just one report. Okay. So take it away, Mr. Wood. Yes, so um, just in terms of my communications, uh, we've had now uh, report cards have gone out both for the uh, Smith Academy for first quarter and just more most recently um, at Field Elementary School. Um, these are important tools. Teachers use them obviously to uh, report progress. Uh, we, we want to have dialogue around them. Uh, the um, elementary school does have conferences uh, on, on student progress. So that's a, a very uh, big help. Um, that's something we might want to talk about for middle school at least, or maybe even into high school at some point. But, um, but internally, in terms of using our instructional model, uh, both schools have what we call a BST team uh, for really taking a deeper dive and looking and, and watching student progress over time. And that's part of our, our, our model, our MTSS model. Um, and that's very helpful. That's ongoing throughout the year, but certainly during this period of time, we use the report cards again as an added data point that we take a look and, and make sure that students are making uh, the adequate progress that we expect, uh, if not more. Um, and as we're building our assessment models as well, that's a big piece of, of data that comes into those meetings. Could you just tell us what BST team is? <laughs> Building support team. Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. It's different in every school district. That's, uh, that's true. We used to call just it for staff. anybody listening yeah. that yeah. heard it and didn't know. Never written that in there as an abbreviation. Um, our own kin uh, kindergarten teacher, Lori Guerra, um, really did a, um, took on uh, something for our, our team as a district. We are required by law to provide um, training for um, really all teachers, but a team of, of teachers in, in both schools um, for um, safety um, and up to the point of in the needing, needing restraints. Um, and so um, as most uh, districts that I've been familiar with, we try to have a district trainer so that we have somebody on site so that we can train people as we bring people on board so that we don't have to always pay for them to go outward. Um, so she, this is a pretty in-depth training. It's four days of training. Um, so she d has taken that on for us um, and she recently uh, returned. Um, the, 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 the training that there were a number of trainings across the country uh, that we took. We, we, looked at the model that worked best for us uh, and chose safety care um, as, it, as it worked out. Uh, the, the timing of it so that we could get it in this school year was out on the West Coast, which was fine. Um, she had family out there, so it worked out that we did not have to pay for any of that piece. We looked at what we would pay for them to ha have her, because the closest one that was gonna be, it was in the South Shore. We looked at the hotel fare, we made it equal so that we're not out any more money she got to see family. So it was a win-win for everybody. And um, she's very happy and we're very happy. So that was really, I think, a win-win for us. Um, we're continuing to work with Desi on our curriculum grant that I think I told everybody about in the past. Um, so we made an application for it. This could mean an additional $92,000 if we get the entire funding of it. Um, they've asked for more information, which I feel is a good sign. Um, and hopefully um, we will finish that up um, um, by Monday, um, we, we're waiting for some staff to report on some things, but others have, have done their work um, in terms of making sure what part of what this grant is about is making sure that districts are using reputable curriculum materials, uh, research-based curriculum materials, um, and uh, 
so we need to make our list of what we have. And, and part of the grant is if you don't have them, then they want to help you uh, work towards identifying what works best for your district. So that's that's a good part of what the... Can, can I ask you a quick clarifying sure. question? Is it part of that grant that what that money is used for is completely additive? In other words, it, is it 90000 that could help offset some of our existing costs? Or is it only 90000 it can only supplement what we're doing? So I know grants are particular sometimes, right? Right. So it's, it's additive in the sense that it would take us a long time to do what that 90000 would add to our district. So we would work to get it done over a period of time. And, and there's no time limit on spending it. I, actually, I, I believe it's uh, FY24. Uh, so in that sense, it's additive because this would allow us to pay the teachers to be on the curriculum committees, buy some of the materials um, sooner than we would be able to do, I think, um, in general, given the um, cost of some of these uh, materials uh, and so forth. So it's additive in that sense. So yes, it's, it's definitely an add to the, to the budget. Um, it won't it won't supplement or supplant, actually. Is That's the word. what I'm looking yeah. to clarify. It won't clarify. supplant what's in our current budget. Okay. So it, it's really additive in that sense. Um, we're thankful for the DPW uh, who did some more tar uh, paving at um, Smith Academy. They did the other side of the entrance. So now both sides are relatively uh, smooth. Um, so we appreciate that. Um, we've been working on, really before that uh, infamous report came out, We've been working on looking at our whole internet structure here. Ben Snyder, our, our director of technology, has been working on that with me. Uh, and we think we have done a plan that will double uh, our upload and download capability uh, that will start in January. Um, I, I, I can get you the, the exact numbers, but I don't have them uh, at the tip of my tongue. We, we were still working on it when I wrote this. Uh, and so, um, and we'll, it should be cost neutral because um, part of what I've been doing uh, as part of the budget process is really diving deep into our budget um, uh, expenses and so forth. And um, we really unpacked our, our um, cable bills and internet bills at both schools. Um, and so we're, we're getting rid of some services we really don't need anymore. Um, and, and so this will, will back back that. Um, so I, I really appreciate Ben's insight and in how to do this. Um, so it's been really helpful. Um, additionally, um, we are going to move forward and work uh, with a, a, probably another contractor because uh, um, Susan doesn't have this in their uh, stable of, of um, abilities and in, in, in it's a conflict of interest if they did. Um, and, and we're going to apply for E-rate funds. Uh, this is not exactly a grant, but it's definitely a budget a, a resource that we could have. Uh, the district has been intermittent, I think is the best way to describe it in terms of applying for these resources in the past. Uh, it's, it's very, very um, complex and, and you really need an expert con uh, consultant to do it. I, I really could not do it on my own. Um, I would need somebody to walk me through doing it. Uh, but the importance of the workshop was, I know the questions now to ask, um, Ben and I have been working on itemizing what we're purchasing in FY24's budget. Uh, so we'll make sure that what we can get qualified under E-rate, there are two categories, uh, of there's services and then there's infrastructure. We'll, we'll qualify under both, but the, the purchasing, um, reimbursement for lack of a better word will be slightly different for each one uh, but it'll be definitely worth our while and it will uh, it's definitely something we, we should pursue on a more regular basis uh, in the future not that every year we will have something that will qualify um, but certainly our services um, would qualify and we should do that um, we have submitted our capital planning plan to the capital planning committee and, and as soon as they publish their meetings, I'll share those with you, uh, those who want to go. I know Adam will be on that committee and so he'll be representing um, our, our and advocating for us as well. Uh, we've also um, submitted our phase two uh, planned uh, for the walkway uh, for the sort of the next phase or come right around the building. Um, so that's in front of the uh, Conservation Planning Committee, and I've been in communication with them. Uh, we uh, just recently gave them our, our financial update as well, and I'll get a copy of that to you as well. Um, uh, just got done. Um, we're still working on our phones. There's been some um, 
delivery issues in terms of uh, supply chain. Um, so, um, and we're a little bit um, connected to what the town is doing because there's some pieces that we're, we're going to interchange uh, with, with town uh, pieces. Uh, and Suzer IT is actually, because they work with both, is helping us uh, with that. We'll just be borrowing it until we, until ours comes in. Um, but we're, we're waiting for them to finish their project so that we can then do ours. All of our wiring has been complete. Uh, and as a result of this, uh, we're also upgrading um, Smith Academy to uh, voice, uh, Smith Academy, uh, Hatfield Elementary to voice over IP as well. Um, this will greatly reduce our monthly costs. <laughs> Um, there, um, which will be very helpful. It's a little too soon to tell by exactly how much, but we, we are going to try to get our con uh, consultant to um, work with us to get that, um, that number so that we can do that. The best part about this, and this is where the security piece comes in, now with voice over IP going forward, all rooms that have phones will be able to di dial 911 directly. And that's by statute we're supposed to. So this is, we're going in the right, right direction. Um, there might be additional funding out there for some cybersecurity, but it, it, it's kind of um, murky as to where that's coming, when it's coming out as a formal grant um, to school systems. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Driscoll mentioned the concert, which, um, and today's concert, which was really wonderful. Um, we've begun to talk about our uh, marketing for school choice and preschool, uh, which we hope to launch in, in January, um, so that we can, when we start opening it up in March, um, certainly for preschool and for school choice, we'll, we'll have a bigger pool of people who will be looking for us. Um, and in terms of just community and building culture, I, I put down that we're doing this insurance um, ad hoc group. I think it's been very positive. I had some technological difficulties the other night at the meeting, but I heard most of it and participated as I could. Uh, and, um, you know, I thought it uh, really um, was very helpful that everybody in the town is kind of talking together about this conversation, which is really helpful. Um, our athletic director, Allison, uh, did attend the uh, conference on hate um, in our schools. Uh, that was in Boston on December 8th, which was, which I think was really important that we be represented. I, I think almost all the schools in the Commonwealth went. Um, so that was, I think, a very, I'm very glad that she uh, was able to attend. And she'll be working, I think, with the advisory groups and bringing back some lessons uh, for them in terms of um, pu pushing into those advisory meetings. As far as personnel goes, we are uh, really doing extremely well. I really compliment Melissa, who has had the most openings this, this fall um, <coughs> in terms of getting um, positions filled and quickly. Um, so we have a long-term sub for um, Tim Kyra. Uh, her name is Maggie Crone. She's starting on a part-time basis now, but will be full-time after the uh, in January, on January 3rd. Yes. Make sure she knows about then, that. I just sent an email. And then um, <laughs> Kathy Lawton, who's been a longtime uh, staff member uh, as an ESP, um, graciously stepped up uh, and she's working toward her degree um, in special education. And um, she is uh, doing our sub for, uh, for long-term sub for Lisa Swanson. Uh, and, uh, but we've been able to backfill her position. So there's no, no, no uh, reduction of services for any of our students. Um, and her name is Anna Carlacci. Um, so we're very uh, appreciative of that. We are still looking for a van driver. Um, we are, as you will see in our, our budget conversations, um, budget costs, uh, van costs are very, very expensive. It'd be much cheaper for us to have an employee on staff. Um, so we're continuing to look uh, for that. I know I kind of went through that fast, but there was a lot there and I want to get through it. <laughs> That's great. Questions? I do have a question. Um, I think you might have skipped over it about Sorry. the the key and lock installers over the break. Oh, yes. Um, my question is, will that affect all the fobs um, in any way? Great question. Um, I I believe what the packages that we bought is that we're we're actually getting a new FOB system, at least at the Smith Academy. I don't think we're getting a new FOB system for um, uh, 
HES. I'll, I'll double check that, but I don't believe we're changing the FOM system there, but we are changing it at um, Smith Academy. Because um, so if it's happening that. over the break and there's anybody that right. goes in for basketball or whatever, yep. they'll need to be alerted. Mm -hmm. or somebody's going to be getting a phone call. Right. Let me in. No, that happens often enough as it is. <laughs> We're very, very fortunate to have people like Melissa and Allison <laughs> and even back to school living so close. Okay. Any other questions? So I think you've seen Dr. Driscoll's report in writing. We wish him a speedy recovery. I think he, is he, I don't are think you still there, Dr. Driscoll? I am, I am here. Yeah, I'm happy oh. to answer any questions if okay. uh, folks have any about the report or I can, I can read through the, the salient points. If you want to give the highlights, you're sure welcome, but we really want you to get well. <laughs> sure. Um, but, uh, um, the snowball went off without a hitch. It was a great event put on by the student council. Uh, the winter concert and art show was fantastic. Um, you know, a big big props to uh, Mr. Hurst and Ms. Millions for for all the effort that went into that. Um, and as um, as Mr. Wood was saying, we're we're beginning to look at advertising for school choice. Um, we have uh, we've we've started talking to the journalism department about doing kind of a you know portraits of graduates um, or kind of what you know showcasing uh, what what we have um, or what our what our graduates uh, kind of bring with them out of Smith Academy, as well as with our our guidance counselor to start meeting with um, with the eighth grade as a as a group similar to kind of what what Smith will, will do when they go and they do presentations about what their what their schools offer and. Um, you know, bring bring in what what the high school experience is and, and high school seniors for for those folks. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Also, starting to work with, uh, with staff as well as student groups to look at uh, what we what we offer and things that we might want to consider offering in the future, um, both to um, you know give uh, give students a, a share of uh, decision making as well as to look at what you know what exciting opportunities might exist for for teachers if they would like to offer something else um and i think those are pretty kind of the highlights if you have any questions i'm happy to answer them <coughs> adam dr driscoll are you willing are you able or willing to share at this point any of the ideas that came up about um things to add for you know from the, your meetings with the teachers not yet those uh, i'm just starting those meetings this week um I, unfortunately, I had to reschedule some from today, but um, we'll, uh, by the next meeting, I should have some. I, some uh, <coughs> okay, thank you. <clears throat> Timing of that was my question as well, so answer it for me. Anything else? Okay. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Thank you. Okay. So um, <coughs> our November 21st staff meeting, we brought in, um, it's been a while, actually, it's been a few years since our school has done any of the practice lockdown drills. So Troopers Carmichael and his replacement, uh, Trooper Gibo, will be, um, we're both in attendance to go over a slide presentation about what <coughs> lockdown drill shelter in place needed to look like and sound like. And then we scheduled them. I made a point of making sure before they left that we scheduled, we already had our first one, which went without, off without a hitch. The next one's an organic one. It'll happen sometime in January in which st staff will not know when that drill will happen. I might inform them the week, within the week that it might happen. <coughs> but ideally what happens is this is um, to replicate a staff member sees or hear something that they feel um, could be somewhat problematic and just erring on the side of caution signals a lockdown drill. So that will also be in consultation with our state and local police who are on site for that drill as well. The last drill will be scheduled is scheduled in April. It will be an announced drill in which we will do it during recess, in which, um, again, they'll be overseeing. We, do, we typically do this with our upper grade students only. We would not put younger grade students through um, a lockdown in the cafeteria <laughs> recess. 
um, during that time frame, we use our upper grade students for that. And again, it's just, you know, what would you do listening to the adults, you know, hearing what the, the announcement is. So it's nice to kind of get those um, underway. I did get some feedback and I had a conversation with off of, um, Officer My um, Minor, Officer um, Laval, <coughs> in which some to begin, I have, some, she and I can kind of created some talking points. We want to make sure that our students understand that there's lots of different reasons why we would do a shelter in place and a lockdown and begin having those conversations about other things other than what the media would obviously say, because there are definitely reasons why we would do those. And I think those need to be <coughs> in our staff's vernacular and talking about why these drills are in place um, with students to minimize any type of anxiety. Um, we had a, we welcomed her back our guided reading consultant. She's been coming in once a month. So this past time, our second floor teacher, so grades four, five, and six, were able to work with her. And our SRSD has uh, we've completed our first round of um, pre and post assessments, and our teachers just started the second round of our pre assessment data meetings, where they came together and scored their first pre assessment for the second unit. Okay, questions. Um, I had a couple on the lockdown drills. There seems to be um, an increase in trend for Alice type training where it's where you're not just doing a lockdown or a shelter in place. Are there discussions about that and maybe changes to protocol that are happening? Do you mean are we promoting Alice? Yeah, or are there discussions about um, looking, you know, like looking at the data and past experiences that we that we might be headed in another direction. I know that when Trooper Carmichael came to do his presentation, they did not want to do anything like Alice. The only thing they're asking our staff to do is to be putting themselves, if there's more than one adult, one adult needs to be close to the door and they need to have something in hand. We are not at this point asking students to arm themselves with any type of object and begin throwing it. I have asked all students to be standing for this drill so they can move if they need to. They shouldn't be crouched. They shouldn't be um, sitting on the floor. Um, so basically it's more about just standing and being quiet and then listening to a direction by an adult. The adult is holding something, but they are no, by no means like, you know, at the door with something over their head ready to hit somebody with it. But at the same time, they have something close by to them in the event that that happened. But the state police do not want our teachers and or our students to be Again, engaging and throwing something at somebody in the as a practice, if right. nothing else. Um, I was talking more about the the plan to exit the building. We haven't really done much around the exiting of it. Usually, I mean, one of the things far, is. Oh, well, I was just going to say we're we're actually going to be scheduling a, a security meeting with our fire chief and our police chief, and hopefully with our new uh, person who's going to be doing the training. But that's that's a part of the conversation to have. We. There are still some questions for us around um, reunification spots and things like that that we need to work out and get more concrete. Um, I know the last time we met and we had the conversation, there were there were um, concerns about people exiting the building with without firm direction from the officers who are in control by that point, you know, in charge of of the um, situation. Um, you know, to make sure that um, we had all the uh, exits labeled correctly, which we we have finished and, and we have done, um, so that there would be a controlled exit to the reunification lo locations. Um, so that piece has still got to be mapped out. I mean, there there is one now, but we we want to update that with locations and so forth for both schools. Mm -hmm. There was discussion many years ago about Alice. Do you guys want to define that just so if anybody's listening to this conversation, they're following? Um, I think that the the, the biggest difference um, for me between an Alice type training um, and then the lockdowns is it, it is it teaches an evacuation plan um, so that if you're able to and if you um, if it's a part of the building where it would be safe. Um, there are specific instructions for how you would exit the building, where you would go, which is a safe place, um, as opposed to kind of sheltering in place or just staying in one location. I remember drills happened in the elementary school, um, did an evacuation to the first congregational church and parents picked up there. 
they timed the drill for dismissal time and had the buses and the parents picking up oh, out on Main Street in front of oh. the First Congregational Church. And for Smith Academy, they went to St. Joseph's Church or Our Lady of Grace. Yeah, the, the uh, Alice came out of um, several different events that happened in the country. And, and one of the things that I, I know uh, I used in another district, we, we said we, we did a modified Alice because in, I believe in true Alice form, the adult in the building with the students makes the decision about evacuating and going and, and go, just go. Um, and many police and fire um, concerns about that because once you get people running out of a building, you lose track of where the event really is and who may be the cause of the event and they don't want mistakes to happen. So, you know, one of the things we're doing is a, is a much more controlled environment where our, our model has the police and fire, whoever, or state police, uh, whoever's in the control um, at that point, make the decisions through radios, which we all now have radios in both buildings. Um, and once we get the phone systems up and operational, they can call each room and so forth. And so it would be a much more controlled environment for, for truly evacuation as opposed to exiting, which I think right. gives a, a very different think, kind of impression. Yeah. The oh. drills that I'm remembering were presented as alternate dismissal type things of, of in case of emergency of a bomb threat or gas leak, gas leak yeah. you know, the sprinklers going off a fire and parents are notified to pick up and this is how it would happen. Is that the whole school that did that? Yeah. Oh. It was an all school huh. thing. Because my understanding of Alice was more about fighting back. It wasn't right. I, there's it wasn't, there's uh, there's components of it. I mean, yeah. they they do they do um, train um, barricades. They're mm -hmm. they're now coming out with um, things that you can put on doors that make it harder to open and close the doors. And there is a part of it um, where there is training, which is actually not all that different from the safety care or the mm -hmm. um, floor control restraint. If if needed. Um, it also teaches structure around how you would exit the building if you were to do so. So there's, it, you know, it teaches what you should do with your hands. It teaches if you are in the building and you, um, you know, there's a weapon and you get it, there's very specific instructions for them what you do with the weapon so that when the police do come in, um, there's no mistaken identities right. of, of what's going on. Um, but and I, and I believe, and I'll let um, you know, I'll let the the professionals handle it. But I do believe that it's it's coming out of research that's saying mm -hmm. that um, that it's overall looking at the data, right. it's um, it can be helpful right. and preventative. Um, the other question, because we had talked about it before, do all the radios uh, turn a dial that go right to dispatch or right to nine one one? I believe now they do. Um, that I'm not one hundred percent sure. I've I know. Never, I know. I know we just it. we we just had somebody come down. We had a donation from the fire department. We had somebody come down and and do their magic in terms of of loading. Um, I, I'm, it's not a Sims card, but it's something like that to each radio to make sure that we can make that contact. We'll double check that, but I believe they they do now. Um, and then my last question was: Are we still doing the blue light, the mm -hmm. emergency? I had a question about the blue light. Yeah. 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 I had to ask about what that was, but yeah. Um, I will say part of the lockdown yes. thing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Testing. And there's a yep. sign outside. It's like if it's right. there. Keep totally. Mm -hmm. keep Just got to make sure they're still working. <laughs> yeah. I would also say, too, that a, a helpful component of the ALICE training is for staff that are in the building with mm, cell definitely. phones, like what you might expect. Like, we need to get the most up to date information. And mm -hmm. if you're taking too long or you know, through dispatch, we're finding that other people have more valuable information that we need. Like we may just hang up on you if right. you're, you know, in your classroom and use your 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 classroom phone or your cell phone to call nine one one. So it's, um, I don't know. I think it would be. I think it's worthy um, discussion and conversation. Right, and and um, I think all of this speaks to making sure that the adults in the building have have whatever training they need to make sure they feel 
empowered to take care of the charges they have. You know, I mean, the, the worst feeling I, I, I would speak for myself in that is not knowing what to do in an emergency, right? I mean, you know, everything from knowing how to evacuate, where are the stairs versus the elevator, things of that nature. I mean, it's just really important that adults know what to do. Absolutely. Thank you. Others? Um, just to clarify one more time <laughs> for me. So the training is you know, obviously being done with all of the adults mm -hmm. in the building, and then the actual lockdown drill is being done only with the upper grades or the whole school. Yes. So what was about the... Yeah, I, I think I misunderstood that. I too, must then. have misunderstood because I thought there was something you said was only going to be the older Is that grades. recess? The and recess um, lockdown. The recess lockdown. The recess ah. lockdown. Okay. The, whole school, the rest of the school will lock down like they normally would in, in the their drill. classrooms Correct. and just stay in the classrooms. But the and actual we'll students engaged in that particular lockdown where they might be in the cafeteria or might be outside uh -huh. will be our upper grade students. Everyone okay. else, it will be a typical lockdown drill where they, where they will just stay in their classroom wherever they're at. Mm -hmm. Are the younger grades given a similar explanation as to why we're doing this? As the, you know, as, I, I, Initially, I, just, I, I was thinking as like the fifth and sixth graders are getting this explanation and you know, we don't need to worry about preschool and kindergarten first and second, but is everyone getting a rather similar explanation of what we're doing and why? Or Yes, at, that's age appropriate. appropriate. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So my question goes to, are the parents getting an explanation? And are you sharing with families the extended list of reasons why there might be a lockdown? That's a great question. Actually, I mean, one of the things that both Monica and I did is I rewrote the whole and gave more detailed explanation about in our school handbook about what a lockdown was, what a shelter in place was, and the whole purpose of them. What I didn't include, and we were talking about that, was in this next revision, because it's basically a living document, I might do just that. And here are some other additional reasons why we might do a shelter in place or a lockdown drill. Those aren't in there other than just for student safety, but I did give more specific details and more um, verbiage around what those were. It, I just, in the past, I was just kind of like safety procedure and it didn't really explain them. So I kind of broke them down into our fire drills, our lockdown drills, our shelter in place and what those were. So those are all in the handbook. And then you are, right, if I remember correctly, you're sending out an email after so that, um, so that families know that the kids did per participate in a lockdown drill? I sent it ahead of time to let them know what time it was. So I did say that we had an announced lockdown drill at a, at a specific time and day. Um, and I did send that an email following in my newsletter just stating that it was a successful drill. We had a, a couple of little feedbacks, but overall the things that we had practiced that, that they had gone over as expectations around the procedures worked wonderfully. And the biggest one is about the teachers making sure their doors are locked if they're not in the room making sure that the doors are quiet and the kids are quiet and that they're shouting really loudly lockdown drill in the event that someone's in the hallway and they might be, you know, shuffled into a room if they were out in the hallway. That was all fantastic. They were really nice and loud. I'm sorry, I have one more question. Yeah. Um, right now in the school building throughout the day, are the doors locked and closed? Yes. Okay, you can so, ask the kids that because I, my key is constantly on me and I'm constantly keying myself in or I'm jiggling it and someone's walking. Yeah, Adam and I did a, did a spot <laughs> check at Smith Academy because we thought we saw somebody going through a door and we're like, hmm. And we can verify, yes. Yes, they were. Yeah. It's great news. Do you have something else, Becca? It's okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. It's... It's important. Yes. So thank you mm -hmm. for of course, going much. into detail. And uh, we wish Dr. Bremner good health as well. And um, when we see her next, we will celebrate her mile, very big milestone, yes. finishing her PhD. Um, and with that, I think we will move into um, a check-in on our district improvement plan. And I'm feeling a little, you know, congratulatory that we're doing check-ins on our plan instead of the plan. It feels big. <laughs> I apologize that it, it you know, we, I think I made it live at noontime or a little after, but I wanted to give the principals and Dr. Bremner plenty of time to kind of, kind of go through the list. It's, it's a change of way, uh, I think, of how people think about, you know, what are we doing and how is it connected to our goals? It, 
I'm not I'm not saying that we're not goal oriented, but I mean, you know, once they're written, because this kind of came in after yeah. we we kind of oh, already wow. started work on, on different things, but we we kind of knew where it was going and it was very similar to um, very various iterations since the summertime. So um, but I think the list is is a is a good start. I'm, I'm, I think we probably left off things that people are doing in their in their daily lives. Um, but um, you have the list. I mean, if, if there's anything, I, I just need to pull it up myself again um, on a different device. Um, if there's anything you have questions about, or so I I really appreciate that we're going to continue every month to check in mm -hmm. where we are on our plan. Um, and to help the committee kind of keep track of some of this. Uh, we've now got it on our sort of working committee calendar as well. We've added that in so that we can, I don't want to say play along from home, but just be mindful of making sure that we're, you know, we did a lot of work to make a plan, <laughs> that we're, you know, implementing and actioning that plan. So I, I think the the one I just want to make sure when we talk about growing enrollment, um, and and I'm reading create a survey for families, I am I, I might have a little COVID era PTSD on creating surveys for families, but I think there's a real opportunity here for this to be a conversation and not a survey. And while I'm fine if we want to supplement the surveys. I don't think the insights we need to find are going to come from a survey. So I just want to set expectations that we're going to be doing something more akin to focus groups um, in terms of how we're pulling people together and, and really digging in for meatier conversations and not sending people a Google form. And I'm not saying that's what your survey idea was, but when I read survey, I now think five question Google form and I'm like, they, they just don't get, they don't give people the time to think. Um, and, and there's no way to really follow up in some of that. So they can be supplementary. I just don't want them to be the standalone. Right. I would say that, that, that I think a survey, what a survey does is it gives you some quick data points that can then lead to the focus groups in terms of what is, what needs to be followed up. What, what didn't we um, get back for feedback we expected uh, as maybe a question, you know, things like that. But, it, you know, I think the folk, having them together uh, that kind of feeds the agenda for a focus group makes perfect sense. I, I think I would, I would reverse that. I was going to say, from, and then sometimes afterwards. Yeah. yeah. So from like consumer research stuff, I would flip those. Yep. Do, do the big qualitative piece first and then follow it up with something more quantitative. Um, but I'm glad that we're we're getting on that, and I have a piece to get on for that too. So, other other things that anyone wanted to ask questions or um, just just for clarity's sake, for myself and for any other community members who might be you know looking at the agenda, um, I really liked in grow enrollment how it sort of specifically was like essay we did this essay we did that, and it would be helpful for me to know if these different um, actions were done either at SA, at HES, or district-wide, and kind of leading with that um, is helpful. So like mm -hmm. under Reach for Excellence, it says train teachers with bullying intervention through second step. I don't know who was trained or... Everybody or yeah, one school like or... What, what right. group of people. That's a great. So, so it's just helpful for me to know. We yeah. could even reformat this so it was sort of like each school had a section and district-wide had a section mm -hmm. similar to what you've done with the capital plan and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited to see the bullying intervention training yeah. going. That's a big deal. And I want to know who's getting it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to answer who's getting that? Um, all K-6 students <coughs> starting in January. Awesome. Thank you. That's why I was trying to do HES and I just erased everything. So my apologies. Oh, here. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward, I will write HES yes. before I start. Yes. Okay. Well, I could tell this was like a collaborative document, like multiple people yes, were, we were adding like to three it. Of us you in know. It, four of us in so, it. So, yeah. Our collaboration is awesome. Mm -hmm. we're, we're getting so really many good. great things are happening. We're getting really good at that. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, anything else on our district improvement plan? So I will um, I will encourage administration to write down the amazing attendance numbers they had from their winter performances, so that when you have even more people there next year, you can celebrate that win. 
So we advertise like for the concerts or the PTA movie nights anywhere other than within school communications. So does something get sent to the Council of Aging or um, through the public library or I don't know, uh, in, in any other place? Like I'm thinking the movie nights, maybe families whose kids aren't necessarily attending our school, but they don't know about the movie night. Right. I can definitely reach out both to the town hall and to the public library. Then those would be great places to advertise if they're willing to have us do that. So and Council of Aging. Yeah. And they have out. a newsletter. And it's on social media. Yeah. Yes. But if they're looking yeah. at I hear, Hatfield yeah. Elementary right. social media, they'll find <laughs> it. But, but other places, that's true. Yeah. Try to we can get push better. it out there in other directions. Yeah. Can do. Okay. So we have, it is budget season upon us, and I know you're all excited. Mm -hmm. So um, Mr. Wood and Adam and I have been <coughs> digging in. And so I think um, first up, Adam is going to have an update. Sure. And then we'll talk capital planning. All right. Sorry, my update's uh, longer than I intended. But um, we have some good things to report first. Um, there's one more year on the bus contract, so one less thing to worry about I, going that, up. It's a bigger deal than you think. <laughs> it's a um, significant savings. Uh, Mr. Wood touched on uh, the internet service that, that um, he was looking into, uh, services that we're paying for with Comcast that we're not necessarily making the full use of, so then canceling those and using them to improve our, um, our speeds. Uh, so better service, no increased costs. Um, and then Mr. Wood let us know that uh, Title I funds, which is, uh, just so everyone knows, federal assistance to help schools with low-income families was restored to 30,000 from 14,000, and that's due to the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, we met last month to discuss our capital plan, and there's a link to that in our agenda. Um, there's uh, a large pot of things that need to be done, and some have been on the agenda, on the plan for a couple of years now, um, but the total cost of everything that needs to be done was around $2.6 million. Um, uh, and this is reflective also of um, costs for things that were on the plan previously spiking dramatically in just one year's time. Um, for example, parking lots, uh, they both need to be worked on. Um, the Smith Academy parking lot estimate went from 206000 to 408000 in a year, and the Hatfield Elementary parking lot went from 218 to 402000 in a year. Um, so those are the things we're dealing with. Um, just other items on the capital plan. Um, we need some new doors at Hatfield Elementary that don't quite latch correctly, and that's a security issue, so that will be prioritized to getting done this year. Um, working on replacing technology and equipment at both schools on a cycle, so just putting in a request to capital planning every year to replace Chromebooks and uh, projectors as well, um, so that as things meet the end of their life, we have a plan to replace them every year. Um, uh, we need HVAC upgrades, um, at, particularly at the elementary school, but also we need some work at Smith Academy. Um, and uh, we have still some original carpet at Smith Academy from 1980. Uh, so we would love to replace that with anything. Um, uh, and then the, the gym floor just needs some rehabilitation, um, but it, that will get prioritized because um, it's just it's a bit of a hazard. That's what I'm understanding. There's boards kind of picking up a little bit. It's yeah. been on the list for it's years yeah. too. It's like it's not been as deferred. long as the paving and no. the carpet replacement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's been on there for decades, at least 15 years. Yeah. So the carpet's going to come back around. I'm just we can auction it off. Jim, I really think your, auctioning is your thing too. <laughs> I'll take the carpet square. I, I think we ought to be <laughs> selling the squares. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so just rather than asking the town for $2.6 million this year, we asked Mr. Wood to prioritize. Um, so we're going to kind of, he, he's picking and choosing sections of the roof at Hatfield Elementary to um, prioritize for the uh, roof repairs. Uh, so the gym and the cafeteria is where it's in desperate need of attention. Um, he had tried, we tried some temporary fixes, which are still... Yeah, I, I, it hasn't rained since the last time they will go up. I will have to say, this company that we're working with right now has been... I think the most aggressive um, and, responsive. And, and responsive. 
Um, so it hasn't rained since the last time they were up there. So hopefully they they got it. There's there's an inch of rain coming Thursday and Friday. So there you go. Cross your fingers. Um, uh, focus on getting one new boiler at the elementary school in the next fiscal year and then doing the next one the following year. Um, don't replace those doors that we mentioned this year, um, the recurring technology issues. We're going to go ahead with asking for carpet replacements at Smith Academy in the next coming year, the gym floor, and then a smaller um, HVAC repair at Smith Academy. I'm not quite sure what specifically it is at SA that needs to be done there. But. It's mostly trying to just get... Um, I believe because the, the the report has it itemized, but I believe it's the um, the heat. Smith Academy runs on heat pumps, so every room has a heat pump. So it's it's to get the heat pumps uh, on the same year and vintage as the control for the heat pump. Okay. Um, so if we can get that, then maybe they would all work at the same time. Okay. So that's our capital plan summary. Uh, and we met last week to begin budget planning for the next year. Uh, and just a, 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 I pulled this out of the guidance from the town administrator. Um, their guidance was, departments are asked to develop a level services budget that meets your operational needs. For costs outside of a level services budget, departments need to provide a narrative describing the services and an explanation of additional costs or increases. Prioritize your necessary operational expenditures and explain the purpose or reason. So the town is requesting all departments preferably to seek level services, but if there's a need, we just need to explain what we're doing, why we're asking for more than what they may have expected to begin with. Um, looking ahead, we have uh, some, some headwinds, um, a decrease in grant funds as we've spent all of our COVID relief funds, um, expecting a slight decline in uh, school choice monies, um, Flat Chapter 70 uh, funds, circuit breaker funds, flat, maybe slightly lower. Uh, but we do have some notable savings in uh, SPED tuition, which um, if we could thank Molly or Dr. Bremner for that. Uh, she's done some work to keep things in-house as opposed to having to tuition students out. Um, so I thought it was worth highlighting that we're going to be saving about $42,000 at Hatfield Elementary next year and about $25,000 at Smith Academy next year. Uh, just by keeping students in-house because we've been able to build the programs here to meet their needs. Um, and uh, we're also anticipating voting, um, having on our agenda in some point in the near future on accepting tuition money uh, for students who we've brought into our programs here um, from other districts. Uh, we're actively looking for opportunities for savings or ways to improve our spending efficiency. Um, there was noted increase in SPED contractual services. Mr. Wood explained that we're having to use a contract service for transportation for a number of our kids. Uh, because we were not able to get a driver to use our own equipment. Um, so we're encouraging Mr. Wood to look into um, raising the wage that we're offering. It, you know, look at what it's costing to have the contract service and how much leeway does that give us in offering a, a more competitive wage to see if we can get it done with our own people um, and save us some money at the time at the same time. Um, uh, Mr. Wood already described uh, E-rate, um, that we're using that to uh, help offset some of our costs in uh, technology acquisitions and also in services. And that's, uh, we get $50,000 over five years. Um, and we're jumping in kind of mid -term midstream. Midstream, so we have three years left. So, so, but we still get the full 50, right. so um, it's not prorated. Um, uh, Mr. Wood was seeking a grant to cover a significant portion of textbook costs. Cross your fingers on that. Um, so after all of that, the question is, can we deliver our district improvement plan on a level services budget? Um, and if not, what is our direction as a committee um, for preparing this budget and um, any information that we need to give to the town to support that? So that's the conversation we're looking for the committee to have tonight because I think we owe administration a, un a clear voice. It may not be a united voice, but it needs to at least be a clear voice and instruction because, um, you know, even level services is, is going to be a cost. Um, but I think we also put a plan together and we need to understand what the, you know, my thought is understand what the plan would cost um, if that's where we want to go. So I think Adam and I 
obviously in budget have had these conversations, but we want to make sure that it's a full committee conversation. And I realize that we're having the conversation without numbers in front of us, um, but that's because I think the numbers are not yet final. And I think we're, you know, if we're asking for more work to be done, and I think we want to give you a chance to speak to, you know, will a level service budget deliver the district improvement plan that the five of us voted in favor of? Um, or will it need something beyond the level service budget to deliver? Well, I think on the, on the surface, um, we can continue you know, as the, as the name implies, we can deliver, deliver the level of services that, that we're getting now. Um, and with what we're offering, people who are looking for what we're offering, they're going to come and, and be a part of the school. Um, it won't get us to the enrollment numbers fast. In other words, you know, we have very specific numbers that we're looking to increase each year. I think we're hampered if we don't add some additional staff at both schools that have some specialty areas that, um, which is a caveat too, because they're not out there. That's the other piece to keep in mind that some of these specialty areas aren't, aren't necessarily out there. Um, uh, but I think that's a, a road to go down after you already know that you're, you're gonna go that way. Um, so, um, you know, so in, in terms of that, those would be new, new pieces. Those wouldn't be level services. There's some things that we can do in-house with staff that we already have that can start to add around the edges in terms of programs and services. And we, we've begun those conversations and, and begin, you know, we need to have, uh, I think, open those up and talk more with staff about where to go with that. But, you know, just very simply, you know, you know, I would love to see a choral program that, we could have at, at Smith Academy that would come up from um, Hatfield Elementary School. That that would require a person. Um, Duncan is is two out straight at Smith Academy and and already does band at the elementary as well. He, he doesn't have any time in his schedule to also do a choral program. Um, Kristen's only part time, so she you know would need more time in her schedule with us, which would also mean she'd have to break contracts with other districts that she works with that complement her schedule to give her a full-time contract. So those are the kinds of kinds of conversations that would have to happen and get promised almost because you can't have people left hanging. Um, so those are pieces that it would be great to have direction from the school committee in terms of, you know, are those things you want us to add into the budget? Even if we said right now, you know, we're going to add 2.0 salaries in the budget. And, and here's the list of things. We might not get to a place of making the final decision until April or so, but we'll have the money in the budget so that people know this is commitment from the school committee that we're going to add, you know, 0.4 choral person, 0.2 band person, you know, things like that um, in the budget. So that would be helpful. And and having the placeholder would give us time to have the conversation with the community that needs to happen, I think, one, to see, mm -hmm. is it a choral person? Is it a computer science person? Is it a, is it a language person? Like, what is it? What is that programming piece? So, you know, we've pretty clearly called out that we need to be the destination for something. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I don't know that we have those folks sitting within our staff. Right. And if we did, would they need to offset part of their workload anyway? Right. You know, exactly. If, if we're building something in. Um, so, so right now, level services, what I'm hearing you say is level services won't get us a destination program per se. Not within the 2025 no. year span. Yeah. So... That's that's where we're sitting. Um, so it either means delivering the the district improvement plan more slowly would be one way to look at it, mm -hmm. um, or making a case for the investment. And I, and I I don't want to sugarcoat it. I think level services is still going to be some investment because you know Adam just walked through what happened in the the capital plan. It's just there are 
costs that are rising. And that's true of, I'm sure, every budget in town. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are you guys thinking? Well, first, I want to thank Adam for writing up the budget update. I really appreciated that. It was very clear. It gave me time to digest the information rather than just hearing it tonight while we're sitting here. So thank you for that. No problem. And for the capital plan printout, that is helpful to see how we've mapped things out. Um, One of the thoughts I had while we were talking about the capital plan, I'll get to the district improvement plan thing. Um, has, have we considered reaching out to the Smith Academy trustees? We, we have, I've met with them. Um, they have a list of um, areas that we would like to invest in for Smith Academy. Uh, they were waiting to see how their, um, portfolio, their investment portfolio performed before they got back to us to, um, you know, tell us or suggest where they would like to put their money. Yeah. In general, portfolios are having a hard time right now. They really are. It's it's a hard time to ask folks that that's, if that's where their funding is based on. Uh, absolutely. And they've been really wonderful with us in periodically, uh, investing back into Smith Academy. You know, they helped us with the library renovation. Mm -hmm. um, they've done the science labs. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't know if you had already yes. looked into what they could help with. Um, just a caveat to that. What's great about that group and, and, and what they offer is they're really looking to the ad. They're not looking to operationalize anything for for the schools they want to look at what will add quality to the so you know what what they would provide us really does go to what our plan is about which is adding resources to the right so um i guess i also while you guys are thinking i want to highlight something that that adam covered and, and michael covered as well that mr wood is digging up stones that nobody has looked under in a long time to find anywhere we can save <laughs> on, on things that we don't think about saving on. And, and I think the diligence has been really important so that when we do go to ask for anything, for $1, for $10, for $1,000, that we have really looked at every grant we can go after that we've looked at every service that we're getting, could we do it cheaper? I mean, the phone service is a great example. The internet stuff is a great example. So um, solar, solar, so that we really are looking to make sure that we're being responsible stewards of every dollar. Sure. And I think more so than any time I've sat on the budget committee, I feel like that's been aggressively um, and intentionally gone after and it, it's a good deal. So thank you. Or bigger money. Here is, uh, I want to point you to there's, and I'm, I got to look into it. I just learned about an HVAC grant. So I am going to try to see if that could cover some of our HVAC issues that are part of the capital plan. Um, so I'll, I'll look into that more fully. Just came available this week. I just got it in one of my newsletters. And I like the idea. I like how we're, you know, we're saving money on electricity at Smith Academy now that we're not quite sure how much yet. But it would yeah. it'd be great if we'd be able to, we could do that at Hatfield Elementary, but we can't do that until we get a roof that doesn't leak. Correct. Right. Um, Correct. So they want, they that, want that to do it. That to be addressed first. I did wonder if, sorry, just to stay on capital planning, can CPA funds be used for parking lot repair for schools? I can like, ask them. I don't think so. Okay. Because I believe there has to be also a recreational component. I think to CPA it. is usually like recreational or historical. I mean, maybe it's old enough. Yeah, it's I like a I could look piece of it. living history. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, if we oh turned it into a skate park at the same time because it's so smooth, maybe. Um, <laughs> Don't say it. Don't say it. Okay. Um, but uh, I mean, but the parking lots do support, you know, yeah. the Hatfield Rack <laughs> out back behind 
um, oh, Field Mexico yeah. uh, yeah. and, and similar activities. And, and then we have like, you know, the, the parking lots could be you know, used to support the walking path that's going around Smith Academy. Right. So you, we, could, we could stretch that. Right. And town meeting is held at Smith Academy. So yeah. mm -hmm. it's a town parking lot. Yeah. Also, for what it's worth, I know people may laugh about the carpet, but we just talked about the need for like when you show students through the building that are looking at choicing in mm -hmm. to Hatfield, if your building looks like it's outdated, it, it gives you the impression that the rest of the curriculum is or or that you know anything else isn't going to be up to par. Um, so it's it's a small thing, but it, it kind of has an important. Oh, it was impact. a huge impact when we took the carpet out of the hallways of Smith Academy and put in that tile. I mean, I cannot imagine that building if it were carpeted. It was hallways. entirely carpeted. Oh, mm -hmm. The lobby, the hallways, oh, everything was and carpeted. The orange, brown, and yellow. Yes. I was just going to say that. <laughs> it was back all that purple. way. Like, and when we did that, we did it piece by piece yeah. and did it with the tile. It was so beautiful it is and beautiful. such a difference that I can only imagine the classrooms. Um, we looked into doing carpets in the classroom, but also updating the cabinetry in the classrooms, those avocado, mm -hmm. <laughs> burnt orange. They're coming back. And, so we and might brown be cabinets I'm in the classrooms. Um, long enough. We even looked at having them um, spray coated just refurbishing the colors right. of them, not replacing them, right. just to freshen the look. Mm -hmm. so, a lot of options there. It has served its time. It has. It's, it, it's, a, it's a strong building. So, I mean, that's, that's the plus on it. You know, it's structurally sound. It's, you know, it does, when you walk in the lobby, it looks great. Um, so it's, it's all about the, meat and potatoes once you get past the so setting aside the capital plan stuff for a minute let's come back to um we've got budget planning to do and 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 it's due so we really need to set some direction tonight if you have feelings on the subject now is the time um so i think we put together a great district improvement plan and I think that as a committee, we are aware of our growth areas and also of our need to sort of continue to launch our district into a positive direction um, to continue, you know, excellence in multiple areas, growing enrollment, um, and really supporting our community. And I think, you know, in every town, but especially in a small town, um, the school is really a point of pride. And it really provides our town with a lot of identity and um, community spirit and civic involvement, all these things that we appreciate. Um, but, you know, going through the budget process last year, I, I do think that it became clear that, you know, for many, many reasons, we have had to cut some programming over the past, you know, multiple, you know, the past decade, for example. You know, there has been some programming that has been cut. I think our district improvement plan um, recognizes that there are like programmatic improvements that we can make. And, you know, a lot of these other goals too, you know, I was happy to hear about like the curriculum grant, like maybe that could help us meet some of our goals, but not everything is going to be met by a grant. And I think realistically to make this happen in this time frame, we are going to need to support it financially. So um, from my perspective, um, I think that continuing to fund a level service budget will probably not meet these goals that we set. So I would love, personally, I would love to see um, the school budget committee put together a budget that we really feel like is going to be able to reach all of these goals and then try to advocate for, for that advocate for sort of what we what we think will get us there. Yeah, it's important to remember that district improvement plan is spread out over three years. So we're not trying to fund three years of planning into this next year's budget. So but we I, have to fund some of right, it. <laughs> I, I would like to see 
uh, a budget that supports what we are planning for the next year. I feel like a lot of the planning in the first year was um, a lot of groundwork. Yeah, you know, it wasn't necessarily as costly as some of the other years. There was a to, lot to, to get be fair that but we're this currently is currently in the first year. This right. is the we're first building year. that. So the budget is for what we're budgeting now is for the second year of the three year right. plan, which I think is why some of us are looking at it and saying it's a three year plan. It's not a five year plan. Yeah, if, if we don't budget for next year to have part of that investment and I hear you that it's that we're not trying to budget for three years into for all one of year, it. Um, but we're already in the first year uh, and we're talking about the second year of that plan. I still support it. Yeah, it is a good point that we're not trying to do 100% of things at this Correct. exact moment, but I don't know, I think three years comes fast. I, I <laughs> there were nine of us that worked really hard on this plan and I am not ready to give up on it. Jen, how are you feeling? Um, I feel like it's a great plan. Um, and I feel like with proper implementation, it is a springboard for slightly easier years ahead in these planning meetings. Um, I would like more information and to have um, more discussion about um, about tuition-based programs and, and how we're looking at um, that as an avenue um, to support pockets of student need that could also um, potentially bring in um, some students and some additional funding. And I think we can bring that back. And my understanding is that's good. We're going to need a warrant to approve that. We need right? a warrant article at the town meeting to approve it. So, but I think that's my sense of that is that it's it's going to be, you know, it's it's going to build over course of time, right? Um, and to some degree, some of that's going to be paying for the paying for the program itself, and hopefully, we're going to see some overage that can help support stuff. I guess. I wouldn't anticipate that that would make the difference between the gap of level services and what we have scoped out in the plan. Like you're not expecting that different to be, to cover the whole, to no, cover the gap. No, Okay. So um, in terms of writing a plan right now for a budget, I'm, I'm hearing, I, I guess we haven't spoken to this yet because we kind of, Adam and I have waited to let you guys speak too. Um, I, I have a hard time writing a plan that we all feel can work um, and then not writing a budget that supports it because I think we all are of the opinion that in action, we, we know where doing nothing will get us. And it may not be a fast path, but it's, I, I don't think we feel good about where that goes in terms of our school enrollment and, and what we can sustain. So um, I feel like this is really the time we have to go out and educate uh, families and give them a reason to want to support some investment and not to be willy nilly about it. It's like it's a pretty intentional plan and very well thought through. Um, and, and if we don't ask for it, we may not get everything we ask for, but if we don't ask for it, mm -hmm. then then I feel like, you know, we, we did a lot of work for naught because we it's, there is no mission without money. So I'm, I would really like to see us make a strong and compelling case, but we need to bring the budget that says, here's what that takes. And, and it, you know, I don't want it to have sticker shock, but it, compared to historically where the schools have been at times, it, it might feel aggressive. 
But I think we have a story to tell and we need to be telling that story. At least that's just my view. I don't think we can be afraid to ask at this point. And we, we put all the work into the plan and if we get to this point and then pull back, it's kind of like, what did we do in the last, what was the point of the last several months of all this work into you know, what our, our plan to you know, enhance our schools for our kids was gonna be? It would have been, it just feels like it would have been a complete waste to then at this point just say, okay, we'll just keep going with it. Here's the level service. Yeah, here's the level service. Like, it, we, I, from my perspective, I, I, I'm all in and I'm hoping that all of us will be, that you know, we can deliver the plan. This is what we need. This is, you know, this is the plan, what, what we want to execute next year, what we need to add next year, and what, if it's additional staff, and or services, this is, you know, this is what it's going to cost, and this is specifically what it's going to go to, and this is specifically what we expect back in return, you know, how it's going to help our kids, how it's going to help grow our schools, um, how it's going to help our schools better connect to the community, all three goals of our plan. Um, I think we just need to be collectively all in and just do what we can to disseminate that and get everyone or as many people on board as possible. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to... There's no budget that everyone's going to agree on, right? It's, it's one town with a lot of feelings. So, um, but I think I hear a pretty united voice from the committee going back to say, please prepare a budget that will deliver the district improvement plan. Um, when is the town expecting our first budget? I may have uh, tomorrow. Know. <laughs> okay. I, I did ask for a reprieve, and I think um, okay. early January is going to be fine. So I think I, I think you're going to have to see the first draft at our January yeah. meeting. Okay. So the the level service work is is about there. Mm -hmm. um, it's still got a few things we're we're looking at, um, but but I think we wanted to make sure we're very aligned as a committee. Um, and that we can go back and then see what needs to be added. And that there's still going to be some give and take on everything, right? It's not going to be, it won't be three years at once. Wish that we could, but there's no way we can afford it. But, okay. So that was a fair amount of the capital piece as well. Is there any other conversation on the capital plan? Now you've got the printout in front of you. <laughs> it's one of those. Wish that we had um, a DeLorean and Doc. We'd go back and pay for that roof a year or two ago. And the parking lots. And the parking <laughs> lots. <laughs> like, oh, ouch. Oh. Is there anything you want to add to the capital plan or the budget no, conversation? Not to the capital plan. I, I think you know we really got we really have to do the the roof and um, and the HVAC piece. We've really got to just keep keep on that. Um, so, um, you know, one of, one of the things that the report recommended was that we have a service contract. Um, so that's new in the budget for both schools. So that's, you know, an additional, each one is like $6,000. So, I mean, that's new $12,000. So that's an, that's an investment in our buildings so that, you know, but a we're taking savings care of. In the long hopefully, run. <laughs> hopefully, exactly. Given where we are this year, it would have been, yeah. right? I would like to think so. Okay. So that pulls us into policy subcommittee report. Woohoo. All right. Um, the policy subcommittee, um, myself, um, Ms. Inglehart, and Mr. Wood have been hard at work on a couple of policies, and we have a few for um, review tonight. The first policy that we would like to review is policy DJB, which is disposal of surplus items. We did discuss it um, briefly at our last meeting. Um, so the, the policy update is like links within links, but it's because we want to be able to show our different edits. So DJB um, is a new policy. We do not currently have a policy on this. So um, there is not a previous version, but the committee has um, that policy for review. It is the second second time we've taken a look at this. So, and the committee more or less consented to this. Yes, the spirit of it. The was, spirit of it. Yeah, sure discussed last time. So, um, we are we are open to feedback um, on this policy. 
Rebecca, I just refresh my memory. Were there any changes that we requested at the last one? Um, there were some minor changes. This uh, version does have sort of some like formatting and um, we, we sort of reorganized some things, um, but the content, we didn't have any content changes. Okay. Is there, so this is the second reading for this mm -hmm. policy. It's certainly one that we could entertain skipping a third reading if the policy subcommittee supported that. Yep, policy okay. felt that was appropriate. Okay, is there a motion to approve um, policy DJB, disposal of surplus items? I can make a motion to approve uh, policy DJB, disposal of surplus items. Okay, Jen's got a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any more discussion on this? Okay, all in favor of approving policy policy DJB? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, welcome new baby policy. All right, um, so the next policy, and it's actually two policies in one document um, because they're closely related. We have policy GDC and GDD. This is um, related to um, leaves and absences for non-union, non-contract staff, um, as well as um, vacations and holidays for non-union, non-contract staff. So um, you have two links in the packet. We have one that shows sort of the former policies and the edits that we wrote in, and then one that shows all the edit, if all the edits were to be accepted, it is a clean version of how the, the proposed policy would look. Um, Can you guys speak a little bit to how this does or doesn't compare to union staff? Yeah, mostly our changes were to support alignment with um, other contracts. And has there been an opportunity to share the draft with any representation of folks that this would apply to? Um, informally, not in a formal way. Okay. They would be very appreciative if we did the alignment. It is only adding, not taking anything away from any of these employees. So it's only benefits. Yeah. And then we made, you know, formatting changes. <laughs> made some things clearer. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, on military leave, we just clean that up and reference what the law, the law. is. Mm -hmm. Is there a significant cost change to the district with the changes in this policy? Mm, not Nothing that, no, not really. Anyone Any other yeah, questions? Feedback? So we'll be ready to put this back on the next agenda for a second reading. Yeah, I think that I think that sounds fine. Um, the policy committee was fully in support of this, so um, we're happy to take it up again at the next, the January I, meeting. Or I would propose then, if there is no, there are no edits, no edits and and feedback for this, that potentially we could vote on it at our next meeting. That makes sense, but this at least gives the public a chance if they yeah. had something they wanted to come forward with. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So we will see GDC, GDD. Can I ask if you folks found it helpful to have the copy with all our edits and how we got there, plus the clean copy, or do you only want the clean copy? Oh, I love the edit piece. It makes so you it see so how much you got... faster to understand what's changing. Okay, good. Phew. So I know it's a lot of work to have both, but for me, it cut my reading time in half. It 
I'm getting the system down, so don't worry about it. I like to see the edits too, so. Yeah, it's just so simple. Are we yeah. discussing GDD yet or just GDC? Uh, we had them both together. Okay. Um, because they were closely related. Um, did you have feedback on GDD? Just on the list of holidays, um, we have Martin Luther King's birthday listed as one. The state lists that holiday as Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And I didn't know if we should align. Yes, thank you. Okay. I'm happy to make that edit. And you know I couldn't resist a table. I'm always a fan. Any other feedback on that one? All right, so um, the last policy, this is coming forward for first reading that we have been working on is policy BDE subcommittees and representative appointments. Um, it was previously titled subcommittees, but then we also had an additional policy BDB-E that was also titled subcommittees. So, um, we can review the edits that we made, and then were we to move forward with the new version, we would um, propose to eliminate the supplementary policy, which was like one paragraph long, and I just copied it directly <laughs> into the um, into the report. So, um, so that's where point six came from. It was the other. Mm -hmm. Okay, we just merged them. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So. Um, uh, yeah, we're open to any discussion. We wanted to make it clear that we, you know, the representative appointments are things that like a single person sits on um, versus a subcommittee, which is really like two members of the school committee plus other individuals. Um, so we kind of wanted to make it clear what those all were and uh, how, how we do it. So are we suggesting that representative appointments need a vote if it's subject to the approval of the committee? Or is the chair the one that is subject to the approval of the committee? That, that's not new language. It's ex know, existing just, language, but I'm just I, I hear because you. I we, we talked about it. I didn't it. understand. Yeah. I still don't understand that. And I yeah. think yeah, we, we actually discussed that. this <laughs> in, um, we did discuss this in the policy committee a little bit. Um, I don't have a leaning either way, but mm -hmm. just to understand what it is and what it will apply to, because there are some things that we will just need to be much more mindful of. Mm -hmm. um, so case in point, I got a request from Connor about a week before the need to have a representative mm. um, on something. And I, I I put it out informally, but we would not have met between right. the time of the request and the time of the need for the representative. So I just want to be thoughtful about how that is mm -hmm. and, and yep. what that is so that we follow our policy. Yeah. We, I mean, we discussed it briefly at policy, but... Generally, the chair makes the appointments to subcommittees and representatives, mm -hmm. and the committee approves of those. Okay. Did we do that at the very first meeting when we reorganized? We did most of them, but did I, we, I don't, I think I don't we think announced them. I don't think we voted we on them. You think we voted? I don't think we voted. I don't think we voted. Back and I think past practice has varied with that. that. And so yeah. that's part of this policy work is establishing yeah, sort of for sure. where we went. Um, one thing that we also felt was that if we do kind of have these like consistent permanent subcommittees and um, appointments, listing them out will make it easier for, you know, af at a reorganization to sort of be prepared like, hey, these are our subcommittees and this is who we're proposing to put forward kind of like proactively. Yeah. Um, they but could yeah, go I mean, I think it's agenda too. It could. I also know on another board I sit on that the chair makes the appointment and the board votes on it. It kind of 
ensures that the full board is um, kept in the loop and sure. supportive of whoever is being delegated I have, other opportunities. As a committee member or a chair, I don't have a problem with any of those. I do think we need to be mindful about small representational things if they are on the fly, how we mm -hmm. want to handle that. Because I don't think we want to say to someone who's like, is there a school committee person who could sit on this for a homecoming for a committee one time or, need? Yeah. Um, I just don't want to be, I don't want to, I would not want our committee to have to say, I'm really sorry, we can't give you someone because there's no chance to vote. So right. we could I would amend. Be, I was going to say, I'm, Especially for the representative appointments, it's it feels it's not. I think a, only for that one, mm -hmm. subcommittees yeah. would have to be. Both. I yep. think the subcommittees. I think there's a different mm -hmm. nature of that. Yep, and we can we can certainly strike that. Um, just saying that representative appointments will be made to by the chair, or subject to approval by the committee whenever possible, or and presented to the committee for sure. Yeah, however so, you guys want to work that out. Okay, let's work on language for that one. Yep. Um, my other question is multi-year maintenance and its affiliation or not affiliation with capital planning because it feels like there's a whole lot of overlap there. There's only five people on this committee <laughs> and, and the committee can be a lot of work. I'm just being mindful of like how much work um, and where things are overlapped and do we want to acknowledge that? We did have a conversation about that and I kind of went back into some of the history of what that subcommittee was about. And that committee is a separate component other than the financial piece of projects on your capital plan. Um, that subcommittee, for example, could have been working with Mr. Wood on the walking path of walking out there, mapping it out, having ideas, and bringing it forward to the full committee to present. Or I'm trying to think of other examples that we've done. Um, what were one of, some of the ones I brought up to you? Was there somebody related to the solar project on that? Yeah, the meeting with solar representatives to talk about that, or when we met with... Um, new phone system. Um, it was hearing information and not simply having the superintendent present, oh, I met with, you know, this, this company and we're going to go do this. It was having the committee get more homework and background information done to help present to the full committee about projects without the financial piece, which then goes to the budget. So I mean, more hands on. I, yeah, I might be alone. And if I am, that's fine. And I'm certainly not going to fall on my sword over this. I have a hard time, a harder time understanding how that falls in our purview. And in light of where we spend our time, it, like, policy budget, superintendent oversight negotiations. Like when I look at our lane, multi-year maintenance that isn't a financial conversation. Like I get it from the financial conversation. That to me is not where I would spend the, the committee's time because I think that's why we have administration. So the end of our conversation left it with leaving it on there, number one, to have con discussion here, sure. but also leaving it there to allow the opportunity for the superintendent to, to utilize them. it. So it's not something that has so, to meet or has to be. So at the bequest of administration? Like, kind of, so if there was a special project you wanted to pull in help on? Yeah, I mean, that is the conversation we had. I mean, my preference would be that it would fall under budget advisory, but because 
again, I, I, I want to respect people's time. And I do think it's really an administrative role. Um, but I love the idea of, you know, the committee having the, the four, forewarning is the right word, but the preparation that they also then present um, to the full committee. I, I think that's, that's what a committee there's, is all about. Yeah, there's some um, buy-in there. Right. I, I just think it, it, it doesn't always have to be about the money on the budget when we talk about, and that's why I like the word finance mm -hmm. rather, rather than budget. Um, it can be more a broader conversation about things that happen. So I, I think it can fall under there to respect people's time. That's all. I, I don't want to lose the topic. I just think it's a a good marriage if, if people want to. And marry that's it. where I was seeing it as a marriage with capital pl capital planning is part of that too, and yeah. a lot of that. Maybe instead of a a subcommittee, you could have a representative, so it's one person. Yeah. So it's less demand of time, and again, it's not. It's kind of like sick leave bank. We appoint somebody to that, but it might not, not might ever come, come up. up. Mm -hmm. But right. if it's listed there and there's an opportunity that it does come up, we don't have to scramble and then say, oh, we have to meet to appoint somebody to be on that. Mm -hmm. So and it's not like it has to happen, but it's moving, there. And moving it down into that other grouping, that makes a lot more sense to me because then it's, it becomes an as-needed and and a one person a doing less it versus stringent. a two person. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. I'm just worried about having committees that's going to really do that. the to really step up and do the work or yep. set the expectation of that work as well. But if there was something that came up that the superintendent mm -hmm. wanted to pull in a committee member and say, "Hey, this this is something we're looking at." And then there's some buy-in, there's some more homework that's done and brought to the full committee for support. Makes sense. Um, is wellness happening? Um, I don't think there's unclear. Um, Jean Hobby is the chair of the wellness. Yeah. Okay. Wellness I committee. Um, I had received an email. Started with school yep. committee. Yes, yes, but it's Initially. now run by her, yeah. and it's just an appointment. Um, she emailed out about it, but I think the meeting was canceled. I don't recall. We did, yeah. And you guys, did you talk about adding the like long range planning? I don't know the right name for that group. We talked about it, and we didn't have the right name for that group. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we going to add that on here? I mean, I think that's a committee discussion where. Is that a an ongoing new committee, or well, is that because that's the other thing we talked about? Do we see that as like ad hoc, because or something like a permanent right subcommittee? I mean, I think there's a case for I either. I don't honestly. know what it is. I guess it depends on what it actually is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, because you know we can always create ad hoc subcommittees for whatever we want, um, as long as it's within the purview of school committee. Um, the one other thing that we just kind of, I think it was in the previous policy, and I think we're open to changing, is item three, that the subcommittee will be provided with a list of functions and duties. Yeah. I think technically all subcommittees are supposed to have like a specific purpose and charge, but whether we need to list in our policy that you will like receive a <laughs> receive a written report of you, you what can't. it is or not, I mean. In fact, we did. Hmm. But gonna say. do we want to put this in here? You know what I mean? Like, especially when we do ad hoc committees, then are we generating this list? Are we presenting it to people? I'm fine with either. We just wanted to bring it up. As a practice, it's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, if they were subcommittees, it feels like they would be something yeah. we write now and uh -huh. tuck away yeah. with this, right? Yep. Yeah. What are you guys thinking? Um, you had a lot of talking points in there. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I, um, I, I agreed with, with your perspective on the multi-year and keeping it, um, keeping it in appointments, keeping it um, in appointments and, and keeping it mm -hmm. um, 
as streamlined as possible. I think most of the things that they discuss and that seems to come out of multi-year is probably stuff that we can describe to the committee through like through my budget updates. Um, but certainly if there's something that warrants special attention, then having someone to go to mm -hmm. makes sense. I mean, as an example, it was mentioned earlier about, you know, if we wanted to add a solar project to the elementary school, you, that might be a place where it would be good to have a school company member part of the initial conversations because you know it's it's a big project right and and so yeah but. and having a rep at that point makes a world of sense right did you guys get more than enough feedback <laughs> no i mean we brought it forward for discussion yeah. this like directly relates to our work so did we it's good did we not discuss something that you thought we needed to discuss I think everything we talked about in the meeting has been brought up. I think I just want um, to know clearly that it's supported that we merge the two policies and that we can eliminate that short the B supplemental B E dash E. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which yeah. was just point six. Yeah. Right. Like it was kind of redundant. So yeah. Okay. I don't see a reason why we wouldn't. Right. All right. We appreciate the discussion. And we have some we work shall, to do. We shall return in January. Thank you, guys. I know you've been doing a lot. Is multi year supposed to be one word with a hyphen as opposed to two words? Formatting thing. In my head, I feel like it's one word with a hyphen, but I could be 95% wrong on that. Just a thought. I'm open, open to. So um, fun add-on conversation, uh, item number 11 is subcommittee appointment updates. So I just went back in our minutes to double check that every subcommittee appointment made it into the minutes and there was two things I could not find. So we can practice our policy. Um, I, for reasons we have talked about, we're sub making a substitution onto capital planning and Adam has graciously agreed to help with that. And we have informed town and um, that committee knows of the substitution. And that's gonna give me time to step off and do some work on the district improvement plan, focus group kind of stuff. So they look like they were gonna collide at the same time. And so it was just trying to a workload balance kind of thing. Um, and I'm not sure it ever made into the minutes the um, the one person appointment for Becca to join the to continue really on the long term planning to which I cannot properly name comprehensive planning <laughs> comprehensive Isn't planning that what you call it? I thought it changed and oh, that was change? the part I couldn't keep up I was used to be master plan it was no. master plan now it's comprehensive plan okay comprehensive plan so. Um, I think continuity would be lovely, and she's been to the meeting. And uh, if she's willing and interested, I think that's awesome. Yes. So those, and then also to formalize a small change in some respects to catch up, we had made an appointment um, for two of us to the sick leave bank, but since we made that appointment, there is a new contract was ratified that takes that down to a single person appointment. And I am um, have asked Kathy if she will serve on that. So I would, I would really entertain a motion to make the approval of three appointments um, tonight to just formalize those three roles. Is there a motion? I can make a motion to um, approve those three roles. Awesome, second. Wonderful. Becca has seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. We had a question about that being in our minutes. So, check the box. Thank you. And thank you guys for serving on those roles. That's really helpful that our school committee is represented. Next up. And what will be our last item for the night because we're tabling item 13, 
and 14 um, is a vote on two new senior scholarships that have come up. Can I just say that on my agenda, 13 is the scholarships mm -hmm. and 14 is the executive session and 15 is the vote. Same. So since I printed that tonight, somehow that, okay. I, I just wanted to clarify it in case anybody's following along at home. Thank you very much. So the last thing, regardless of how it's numbered tonight, <laughs> is going to be our new senior scholarships and a, a vote on those. So Mr. Wood, do you want to present those? Sure. So we have, um, I apologize, I have to jump down to my small screen here. There's... Here, I will hand you something that's not small. I can dig in it once I get it. It's just find, it. finding it. Thank you. Um, so um, we have been very fortunate to have uh, the Zygmunt um, family um, make a um, scholarship um, in the amount uh, for seniors. That will be, I believe it's, theirs is 20. 750 annually. 750 annually, thank you, it's in the middle. 750 annually. Uh, for a senior, um, and um, this would start with the uh, class of 2023. And then um, we also have the um, Crossman um, families um, that would be donating a $2,500 annual scholarship um, for, again, starting in the class of 2023. Um, for as long as the 2500 is available in the fund. Uh, and um, this would be called the Doris G. Gilmet <coughs> Memorial Award. Um, and um, I believe uh, that the reason for this, uh, the person would have to demonstrate the commitment to their community and school, exhibit compassion and a strong work ethic, and is continuing their education in the teaching field or health sciences. Because I believe uh, Doris was a teacher. I have a question for you um, about where the funds are banked. Um, in the last few years, I was involved in creating a scholarship at Smith Vogue. And they have a system that uses some investment. Um, they told me about it and, it, and it's just a company and it, all the scholarship money gets put into these accounts and it generates better interest than if it's just sitting in a bank hmm. and it's managed more efficiently. So, and I wondered how we do ours, where these monies are sitting. So the majority of them sit with the individuals who have uh, entrusted the funds um, and they send the check at the time of the um, piece. We do have some that are historical. Um, they're in the student activity <coughs> uh, bank account. It's not, uh, I mean, we get their, um, it's whatever the interest rate on the checking account is essentially. Um, so it's not an investment portfolio. But like, like this one, um, at the time of the ex execution of this agreement, the sum of $50,000 is establishing the fund. So that 50000 is going somewhere. I will, right. I, I will double check. I don't believe that's with us, though, that they've established that. I thought one of them was sitting with the treasurer, the town treasurer. That's what I thought, too. Yeah. That's what I, I know thought. It does talk about that. that. I, I'm just... It's sitting somewhere. I don't think it's believe yeah. money. Oh, shall said funds uh, for the Zygmunt one. The the funds are sitting with the town treasurer. Uh, well, the and other same one for the other. And the yeah, other one as well. well. Okay. Um, they, they they are each different. So I just feel like most. I can ask them how they invest them. But my my sense is that they're just in it sitting in, in it. a bank account. Anything that's going to make money has some risk too. 
Right. No, this was no risk. Okay. Yeah. I, I, that it's guaranteed a certain level. Okay. It was explained to me, and I'm sorry that I. it was no, okay. pre-pandemic that I sat through those meetings of setting that up. Um, it was very interesting and then like me. Is it a private foundation? Uh, the only reason I'm saying that is municipalities are forbidden to invest by law, by statute. So if they have a private, uh, if they have a private foundation managing their scholarships, then that's something different. Can you look into that and sure. see what the options are? Even I could. I still have all the contact of the people at Smith Folk and I mm -hmm. can just... Sure, I can reach out to either one. But yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, municipalities and Smith Folk is a regional district, so it's a municipality on, onto itself. But so, they also have trustees. So again, so if yeah. that's a private foundation right. piece, so then I, they could do that. Interesting to think right. Of now. So like uh, the board of trustees for Smith Academy is a private foundation. They they can do investments. It has nothing to do with the school at all. We we don't have any relationship with that account. That's why I had so many questions about the scholarships because of what I went through in the last couple of years. That and the history of scholarships at Smith Academy that were written where they said the interest would be given every year because when they started right. the fund and they put in a large sum of money and the interest looked attractive, right? Uh, you know. 30 years later, it doesn't look so attractive when uh, the funds have drained and you're getting a dollar 49. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, it's definitely a topic to have a conversation about because there, there are some, and, and, you know, at the very beginning, of course, the, there probably was a larger amount, but some are very small amounts um, that, that are given, but they're still given. Um, those are the ones that are still sit with the town. Um, and then again, you know, we have those who I know that Riley spends an inordinate amount of time chasing them down because they have to get a check by the graduation date and so forth. And we've got to have it ready. Um, so, um, yeah, it's. The ones that have seemed to have dwindled to those small amounts, um, cause we tried to address this years ago, we no longer had any contact information. There are some situations like that. Yes. For any of the, mm -hmm. can't sunset them out. Right. You don't have right. There's no to, language that, yeah. that does that. But these do. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I appreciate that these have to find endpoints. Yes. So that, that was have, a big deal. I, right, I appreciated that checked. in there. <laughs> so, is, would anyone like to make a motion to approve these two scholarships? I will make a motion to approve the Doris G. Guillemet Memorial Award and the, sorry, I'm rushing to get the, the Zygmunt um, Award. Okay, is there a second? A second. Any further conversation? Thank you to these Thank people. you to the yeah. two families. Yeah. So has, have they received a uh, thank you? Not yet, yeah, but I, can, I will do that. Okay. Um, if you send me the address, I'll mm -hmm. follow up on that too. So um, all those in favor of these two scholarships? Aye. 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 And that was unanimous. I'm sorry, who seconded? I did. Oh, thank you. Okay. And um, we haven't had feedback to have an executive session, so we're going to table that and uh, anticipate that in January. It's not time sensitive. It is not on our agenda, but could you confirm for everybody the date of our January meeting? Indeed. In fact, we can have a conversation. So... Um, we need to book meetings coming up. So January, we have established for the 18th. So it's on my calendar, 7 p.m. So Wednesday the 18th is our we, next meeting. We had an, I had it on my calendar like a reserve one. We're not anticipating using that. We're not anticipating January. the reserve. Great. So I will be following up with you all in the next week or so. Um, with hopes of school schedules being out and available, that we can look at really blocking the rest of the school year mm. so that we have them all on the calendar. So I will do that offline. Right. Because it is late. And I will make a motion to adjourn. Excellent. Second. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 And we are adjourned at 9.03.
Good timing. 